can I share with you, did you see the thing that Andrew Cuomo said about COVID being your own fault? No. I share this with you. Uh, I'm going to try and get audio to work here too. Here we go. Let me know if you can hear this. Or if you can't hear it, let me know. I guess it's better. And just to make it very simple, if you socially distanced and you wore a mask and you were smart, none of this would be a problem. It's all self-imposed. It's all self-imposed. If you didn't eat the cheesecake, you wouldn't have a weight problem. It's all self-imposed. So he got, I, I can't believe I'm about to say that Andrew Cuomo got me thinking, but Andrew, Andrew Cuomo got me thinking about something. Um, Cause I saw him say that. And I saw, um, there was also, did you see CBS did a, a piece on parlor? No, but we knew this was coming. <clears throat> they did a piece on parlor. It wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't like it's all Nazis or anything. Um, but they did cite, they had um, Tristan, what's his last name? Harris. Tristan Harris, the guy from the Social Dilemma movie, who's he's runs some social media policy guy, oh. Institute thing. They had him on saying like he was worried about, uh, worried about um, echo chambers on Parler because they don't fact check and fact checking is very important, blah, blah, blah. Um, and... Uh, you know, I'm going to agree with Andrew Cuomo sort of just for a minute because I know it's Ooh. offensive, but I'm going to agree with him <laughs> Okay, because there's a recurring message that we're seeing and we're seeing it. Um, lately, we're seeing it about two particular things, although we see it about a lot of different things generally. Um, and that message is that people are too stupid to make good decisions for themselves. And yeah. Cuomo's point with this message is with respect to COVID behavior. Well, you know. If you just do the things I told you to do, I wouldn't have to get more draconian. Like it's kind of a uh, authoritarian father kind of message. You're not obeying, so you get you're grounded for another week. It's all self-imposed. Didn't, right? didn't his brother get it? Not probably. Um, yeah. It, it don't hypocrisy is not a okay. thing that we can use against them okay. ever. They don't care. Um, and uh, and you also see it with social media, right? People aren't uh, they're too stupid to determine what's true and what's not They're, they need fact checkers they need some kind of thing here and it's you know it's easy to push back on this stuff because it's so offensive i mean if you're a normal person if you're especially if you're in this audience right you don't fall into the category of someone probably who's too stupid to do this stuff so you get offended you look at this and you're like that's just an offensive thing to say but you know what um they're right often often People are too stupid to make good decisions. That is true. Often many people, not everyone, often many people are too stupid to make good decisions for themselves. That is true. Um, but here's the caveat. The principle of self-ownership means that we respect their right to be wrong, even to the point of death. We respect their right to make bad decisions. That's what respecting someone is. That's what individual rights are. That's what self-ownership is. You respect them. So the evil here, I looked at this and I thought about like the evil here is not in Cuomo encouraging people to do things that he thinks will be better. Like it's not evil to say you should wear masks and you should socially distance. I mean, you may disagree about the validity of that. That's all fine. You can have those arguments, but it's not evil for someone to stand up and say, you should do these things and you should save grandma and blah, blah, blah. And like, it, that's fine. Or it's not evil to say, hey, you should verify your sources on social media. Don't believe anything that's posted and be careful. And there's lots of hoaxes out there and, you know, blah, blah, blah. The evil comes when you deny self ownership to people. And when you stop arguing that you should listen to experts and you pick up a gun and you demand that you must listen to experts. Yes. There's a huge difference because, between those two things. Because, you know, he's not saying um, 
he's not making this argument that people are too stupid to make good choices to roll out his plan to uh, prevent you from ordering McDonald's or, you know, to prevent. And and there are some politicians who've who've taken it that far. I mean, Bloomberg, Bloomberg was was instituting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he had taxes on sodas, I think. Right. And yeah, smoking and other things that he felt were bad for you. And he's even on the record uh, saying that, uh, that taxes are on poor people are good because it, uh, you know, poor people, I, I'm going to paraphrase. They're too stupid to the spend gist, their own money. Yes. The gist of what he was saying is that it's good. It helps poor people when you tax things that are bad for them because they're too dumb about what they're going to buy. Yep. Um, but Cuomo's not making that. He's he. It's like picking and choosing and saying you're too dumb to make the right decisions when it comes to a virus. So the state is going to mandate and force you. We're going to restrict your rights and we're going to force you to behave in a certain way. But we're not going to do the same thing when it comes to you smoking or drinking or eating Big Macs every day or whatever it is that we think is. Well, not I mean, good I, for you. I think I mean, I think all, all of those would be bad. And I think they're all on the table, even in New York. Um, but I mean, and, and you see this from the World Economic Forum a lot, the same kind of attitude. Right. What makes it evil is that they're violating people's right to self-ownership and they're treating people like pets. And the other thing I want to point out here is um, there are no experts in this equation. Um, When you say you must (laughs) you must listen to the experts. Yeah. Experts means rulers because experts Mm -hmm. are just people who know a lot. But experts can't make you do anything. Only rulers can make you like rulers have guns. Rulers can make you do something. Experts can't make you do anything. Only people with physical power can make you do something. And those people choose the experts. There's always experts, quote, experts that have opinions about things. So the experts are always the experts that are aligned with whatever the people in power want. Whatever they're pushing. Yeah. Yeah. So... This is not, it's not, there is no such thing as rule by expertise. There is only rule by power, only rule by power. And I want to get that out of your head. That's the idea that like, well, there's experts that can teach us or can rule us somehow. There's no such thing as rule by experts. There is only rule by power. There's only rule by power. There's no rule by expertise. So, um, I, you know, I'm, I, I was looking at this and I know a lot of people are offended by this and they, they, they say um, they might wonder to themselves, like, how can people tolerate this violation of self-ownership over something like COVID, right? And you brought up they're not doing it over this or whatever. But my point here is um, you probably, you're probably in the category of people, many of us are, you probably conceded this point a long time ago. Um, you agreed that there are some things that are so important that they justified the right to some, to violate someone's self-ownership. You did it with the war on drugs. You said, well, people shouldn't be allowed to inject heroin because that's really bad. And don't give me arguments about like, oh, well, we just want to make sure that drug crazed bus drivers weren't killing, you know, school children. You can, you can have, uh, rules about actions and consequences like you can have strict rules about violence against people and behavior and not let drugs be an excuse or even make drugs a compounding factor and and make it automatically intent if they were on like you can do things to combat the consequences of drugs the argument was you're too stupid to not inject heroin into your eyeballs therefore heroin needs to be legal you did it with social security boomers you're too stupid to save for retirement, so we're gonna save for you. You've conceded the point philosophically that your rights are a gift from the government. You conceded it a long time ago. And once you've conceded that point philosophically, you've lost. You lost. You're in the world of pragmatism. There is nothing that can't be argued. Carrie, you're saying like, well, why don't they stop people from eating McDonald's? What makes you think they're not going to stop people from eating McDonald's? They absolutely will go down that road. They've already taxed soda. They will. They will do that because there is nothing stopping them because the point has been conceded. And what they did, and I just want to I want to I want to steer people back to what I think is the right direction here. 
Even if you don't agree with the principles, I want you to agree that principles are important because what they did, how they got you to do this was by introducing pragmatism. They picked on evil ideologies. They pointed to the wicked principles that those ideologies were built upon. And they used those ideologies to smear the concept of principles as such. And they, they introduced this concept that, well, you got to be pragmatic. No principle is, you can't just have a principle and always stick to it. That's radical. That's fanatical. That's extremism. And the examples they used were people like Stalin or Hitler, who were had evil principles that they adhered to. So, But they used that to try and convince you that principles as such were bad and that you needed to be more, quote, pragmatic, and you bought it, right? Because when life is comfortable, you know, principles seem like luxuries. You can get away with it. But what you did is you cut your oxygen line, and you've been floating around in space ever since, and it's inevitable that you will run out of oxygen. Don't be surprised that you're running out of oxygen. You cut your line, and if you want to save yourself, and you want to save America, you need to rediscover discover the importance of mm -hmm. principles. You need to reconnect to a foundation. And you need to say principles, the right principles are inviolate. The right principles can never be violated. That's what makes them principles. They are summations of fundamental truths about morality and about reality. And they can't be violated. We should not allow them to be violated. Because so, otherwise, this COVID thing, it's just one more ratchet. It's going to keep going. They'll get to McDonald's. They'll get to your steak. The World Economic Forum is already talking about, we'll be vegetarians in 2030. We'll eat less meat. Like, they'll get to everything. Everything. Sorry. Okay. You will look like you want to say so something. What is the, well, what's the principle that you think? Somebody in the chat said, here comes Carter's um, uh, anarchism. Uh, I'm actually not even going to push for anarchism because I, the reason <laughs> that I can be friends with uh, I, a bunch of libertarians and minarchists is because we agree on the principle of self-ownership and the principles of individual rights. And we have a disagreement on the implementation. And I think there's valid disagreements there because uh, I argue that the government necessarily infringes those. And I think the counter, their counter arguments are... Yes, but um, the alternative also infringes. And like our goal, we have an aligned goal, which is to not infringe on those rights and to figure out a way to not infringe on those rights. And so we can disagree about the specifics. There are libertarians who believe that, for example, that um, the government should be funded. The government can do a bunch, you know, some stuff, but should be funded voluntarily. And like that gets rid of the violation of property rights inherent in forced taxation is that better yeah like i don't like you can argue over a bunch of stuff so I, i'm not here so, to make an anarchist argument i'm here to get you to find principles that you can hold fast to and stop compromising them on them